Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below to see all of those discounted games. Hello my friends! It's convention season's in full swing now, and the second largest convention in America, Origins Game Fair, is going to be this week when this video releases, basically the 19th to the 23rd of June 2024. Now I already released a video of my top 10 most anticipated games, and if you missed that you can click the link below or up there in the corner uh, and see that list. This list is the top 10 games at Origins. So these are ones that are mostly for sale there or releasing, either either releasing there or they just recently were released and this is the first big convention that they're gonna be at. But these are ones that I've already had the privilege of playing. So if you're wondering which lists to, to go with, I always think this is the better list because these ones I've already played and I already can tell you they're, they're good, they're fun. So my top 10 games that are actually at Origins this year. Number 10. My number 10 is a light little game that you can actually play on the beach called Seaside. This game is sort of a, a drafting game, a tile drafting game. We have these nice wooden tiles. And again, this can be played on a table or you can actually play them on the sand of the beach. And you're drawing tiles out into a, into a main area and you're deciding what to do with it. Depending on what you do with it and depending on what that tile does, you'll be doing other things. Sometimes you're taking another turn. Sometimes you're set collecting. Sometimes you're you're building up something for later. Sometimes you're building up things for end game scoring. It's one of those games that you could play with pretty much anybody. If you're going to the beach with your family, doesn't play a lot of games, you can play the game. But if you're playing with gamers, there's enough, there's enough little nuances to the set collection and pressing your luck a little bit as to what to do that there's enough there that you can play this in a casual setting with gamers where you can kind of chat, but there's still enough going on that you're still thinking a little bit. One of those types of games, but it's sort of a unique in concept from the way it plays, where you can play it. Uh, you're at the convention there, you can, you can just you know, play it out in the street there. Uh, this is number 10, Seaside. Number nine. My number nine is Cascadero. This is from Bitewing Games. This is a Reiner Knizia game, a route building game. Uh, and by the way, I've already reviewed all these games. So if you want to see some of these, you can look at all, look up all these games on my channel and see all the reviews. Now, Cascadero, uh, it's a network building game. It has some similarities to like Blue Lagoon, Through the Desert, other Rana Kinsa games, but it still feels very different at the same time where you're placing these caballeros and you're trying to build and link towns to towns. You're trying to block other players, but you're also, as you're getting influence in these towns, you're moving up these tracks. And these tracks are sort of comboing like a roll and right would, where you go up on one track, which triggers another one, which allows you to go up on one thing, which allows you to do this action and that action. There's lots of comboing there. So think of like Reiner Canadian, very streamlined sort of network placement with some comboing. That's Cascadero. Number eight. All right, this next one is Agueda. This is City of Umbrellas. This is from 25th Century Games. This is sort of a tableau building drafting game where you're, you're picking up these very beautiful pieces of umbrellas. And this part feels a little bit like Azul. You're drafting these pieces in a very interesting way where you're getting them in one specific line. So you're getting one, two, or three of these depending on uh, which line you take it from. And the more pieces you take, the more it costs. And you're placing them on your board and you're trying to do some things where you're lining these things up and it's the umbrellas in a spatial way on these three different streets. And you're trying to uh, suffice what the goals are for that game. Each game there's different goals. And so you're trying to set them up so you have you know, certain reds in each column or have, have more of this or have two of these or have the most of this color or this or that. There's all these different goals that each game it feels different, but you're putting these in different rows. You're unlocking and painting murals that's going to give you more opportunities to score. It's a very interesting game. I'd say it's about the weight of an Azul. It's about the length of an Azul. It's a little bit nicer. It's not as mean in the drafting aspect. It's a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more open, a little bit more forgiving. Uh, but you're you know, drafting, placing on your board, trying to score now and trying to score at the end of the game. So if you like the Azul, uh, this might be definitely one to check out because it has that feeling. But again, I've reviewed this, so go check it out for more detail. That's Agueda, City of Umbrellas. Number seven. Number seven is Donut Shop, also from 25th Century Games, and Aguero was the one just before this as well. Donut Shop uh, is a game where you are basically dra you're, you're drafting different donuts in different orders, and you're placing donuts onto a display up in the middle of the table that everyone's placing. 
and you're trying to score for certain donut types that are adjacent to each other. So there's an aspect, an abstract aspect, a spatial aspect where you're scoring, but you're also trying to set it up because you have some order cards and if you can box the right donuts with the right orders, you'll be making money as well, boxing those out, keeping them from other players and keeping players from scoring uh, as they place donuts. Because this game has a, has a sort of a general grid and it's interesting because you can score things but you want to cut off other people after you've scored because otherwise they might be able to one-up you and one-up you and one-up you. But if you're able to score and sort of cut that off by boxing the donuts, there. The, the, the presence of this game is amazing. It looks beautiful on the table. It's a lighter game but it still has some decent things to think about and that is Donut Chop. Number six. This next one is Stone Spine Architects, and this is from Thunderworks Games. This is in the role player universe that they've done many games in. This is a card drafting game and a dungeon building game where you're building up a grid of cards that is gonna be your dungeon. You're building them up one row at a time. And you're building these dungeons up in certain ways that each game's gonna have some different goals and uh, for everybody and you're trying to build them up that way. Each person will have something that you wanna to try to connect to them to the entrance and the exit and possibly even both. And that's gonna be different for everybody. And there's also some other different goals that you're able to sort of spend money to get later on to give yourself some, some individual goals as well. And there's also ways to put certain things in your dungeons that aren't actually on the cards that will help you with set collection as well. So it's an interesting game. It's you've got drafting, you've got tableau building. It's got an interesting, you know, it's got a theme that a lot of people still like for the other games. Uh, so if you're looking for that sort of 45 minute ish drafting game, tableau building, spatial game, definitely want to take a uh, take a look at Stone Spine Architects by Thunderworks Games. Number five. This next one is sort of a thinky party game called Mind Map. And in this game, you're trying to basically place your piece in an XY grid relative to where you think it lays with other things. So there's a bunch of words on an X axis, there's a bunch of uh, where, you know, things on, a, on the Y axis, and you have one of those words as yours. And you're trying to figure out where does, where does my word land in this XY grid in relation to some of the other cards that are out there and in relation to what, where I think, where I'm watching other people place and I'm trying to think about where, where it is. And once everyone's placed, then everyone's gonna bet which one they think whose is whose, where do you think this lands? And it's interesting because everybody has different ideas of what something is. Is something better than something else? Or is it bigger than something else? Does it cost more than something else? Would you want it in this situation or not? And it's very interesting because it's very vague and it has a lot of interpretation and you get to, the scoring's fine and fun, but it's always fun to listen to people's ideas as to why they thought something was more or less than something else. And those conversations is really what makes the game, but it is a very thinky, if you like those sort of quieter thinking uh, party games, but then once it scores and you look at it, then there's a bunch of chatter. It's an interesting little mix there. So that's Mind Map. Number four. Number four is a trick-taking game with deduction from Bezier Games called the Xylotar. And this one has a, a wacky theme with a polar bear playing a xylophone and a guitar, basically an instrument that's a cross between two of them. In this trick-taking game, you have face down cards and each of them give you a range. They're, they're a suit, you know what suit it is and you know what the range of cards are in that suit. And, but you don't know the exact number, but as you play cards, you're going to learn what numbers were there and you're gonna be able to learn because all the cards are placed uh, in sequential order, secretly from another player. So you know that cards are gonna go in, a, in an order, ascending order from, from uh, right to left. And so when you play a card, you know what something may or may not be able to be anywhere lower or higher than that card. So as you're playing cards in the tricks, you're learning more about what, but what, what numbers might be in front of you. And then as, at any time during the game, uh, during the trick, uh, during the round, you're able to pick up two cards that are yours, look at them, and you must use one of those to bid. So at some point you're trying to bid, win the right amount of cards, but there's a lot of sort of deduction and aspects of it. This one was very unique for me, really enjoyed it, that's Xylotar. Number three. Next one is Blueprints of Mad King Ludwig, also from Bezier Games. This is a sketch and write game, or a draft and sketch game, uh, where you're going to be basically drafting different rooms of cards, and then you're gonna be drawing these on a, on a nice transparent little sheet with colored pencils and coloring them in. 
And if you've ever played Castles of Mad King Long Vig, it has a lot of similarities to that where you're getting different rooms. As you complete rooms, meaning you get all the doors you sort of attach to other things, they trigger special abilities that allow you to do different things and do different combos. But if you like Castles of Mad King Ludwig, this is like a 45 minute to 60 minute sort of crunchy uh, draft and write game with that looks beautiful when you're done. So if you like drafting and write games, if you liked Mad King Ludwig comboing Euro things together, having uh, lots of goals that everyone's sort of fighting for as well, biggest rooms, most rooms of this type, this and that, then I think this is gonna be one that you're gonna like because it, it, it mashes a lot of those together with that Mad King theme, and that's Blueprints of Mad King Ludwig. Number two. This next one here is a little bit of a cheat because it is an expansion, but it just came out, Foundations of Rome, Roads of Fortune. You know, if you haven't played Foundations of Rome yet, I believe you'll be able to try it out again uh, at, at Origins, but now the expansion is out that I just reviewed. And it takes that game that's already amazing without the expansion. It's not one you absolutely need, but if you have Foundation to Rome, this is amazing and they're gonna have it there. And I know this is hard. I wanted to put it on this list because this was a Kickstarter and it's not easy to find if you didn't back it. Uh, and so now this is a way that you can, hey, I didn't, I missed the whole thing a year ago for this expansion. I have Foundation to Rome. I wanna go play it, check this out. And you can still buy it there, which is cool if you missed it. And for those that didn't, well, you could play Final Fantasy Rome and the expansion there and see if it's worth it to get the extra stuff there. But I already reviewed this. It takes a game that's already amazing, doesn't add a lot of rules, but makes you play the game and think about it differently, which is what I love about expansions and why this is number two. Number one. Before we get to the moment you've been waiting for, I want to let you know of an upcoming opportunity to win money while gaming. The World Series of Board Gaming is in Las Vegas from September 22nd to 26th, and they're giving away over $200,000 of cash and prizes, including Super Bowl-style rings, to the winners. Now, there are 16 different games available to play, like Ticket to Ride, Heat Pedal to the Metal, Earth, Brass Birmingham, and more. Now, you can click the link below to learn more details of how it works and to receive $25 off your entry using the promo code GAMEBOYGEEK. Now, number one is also a bit of a cheat, and I apologize for this because most of the ones I put on this list, I want, I searched the BGG preview list. By the way, thanks, Borging Geek, Eric Martin, on, and team for putting this list together. It helps, I, I don't know how we would do this without this. Um, but most of the games, I try to make it so that you could buy them there. This number one, unfortunately, is demo only, uh, but I imagine that it should be for sale soon, and you'll be able to check it out. It is vegetable stock. This is from Arcane Wonders is bringing this over. And this game, I bought this game from Taiwan. It was one of those little known games and it's amazing. It's a short little filler game about a stock market, but it's called vegetable stock. So you get all these different vegetables and they're gonna be worth a certain amount because each round people are gonna be taking cards and adding it to their tableau. But the one that is left that nobody takes is gonna be moving up the stock market. So it's like counterintuitive where the ones that you want aren't the ones moving up, but the ones that moved up last round, everyone's gonna sort of want. But the other twist is if it gets past the top mark, it falls all the way down and crashes. And so you're trying to, at the end of the game, have the vegetables that are worth the most money. Uh, it's, it's simple, it's easy to teach, the, 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 the manipulating the market is so fun, the, trying to figure out what other, like timing it for the right time for the end game is interesting. It works well at all player counts. A nice quick little filler that is just, it's one of those games that you'll play, probably play three or four times in a row because it takes only like 15 minutes, but it is awesome. Vegetable stock, Arcane Wonders is gonna have it for demo at their book booth with the new artwork. Well, I hope this helped you uh, learn about some games that uh, have recently come out or are releasing at Origins. Uh, this has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you love. And keep in mind, I've already reviewed every single one of those games in this list. So you can go to my channel, check those out if you haven't yet. Feel free to subscribe here as well. Game Toppers upgrades every game you play and they'll be launching the 4.5 Kickstarter this July, which will introduce the new Galactic Minecraft Game Topper, as well as new miniature game terrain packs, leg kit options, dining covers, accessories, and amazing package deals. Game Toppers will be at the Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio, June 19th to 23rd at booth C2119, where some of these new items will be demoed, so stop by there or check them out at GameToppersLLC.com.